Hey everybody, this is Dan Renan, the festival director of the Hospital of Barcelona International Film Festival. Today, finally, today, this is, I mean, this is history, guys. Hi guys, Stefan and Laura, those guys made this beautiful documentary called The Day I Had to Wrap. And those guys right now all over the place. They are really hard to reach them. This is, this is, I mean, this is exclusive. It's amazing. Guys, how are you? Thank you for being with me. We are so excited. Excited to be Darwin. with you, Darwin. We love your festival. We love the programming. We've been following you. We we wanted. We've been wanting to come to see you in Spain for, you know, the past year. Yeah. We've been in contact with you. We we love the choices of the films that you bring. Just beautiful um, content. Amazing content. Yeah. Diverse programming. And uh, we're just happy to sit down and talk to you about about life, about <laughs> film, about anything that you want to talk about. Filmmaking, uh, love travel anything we are here <laughs> yes i love that guys i have to learn from you guys too much so i'll be happy to meet you in barcelona first of all guys where is this uh, beautiful idea coming from that they have to grab hey, and walk me a little bit where is this coming from please yeah i'm gonna, I'm gonna pass to laura you know laura talks a lot about the first beginning in our generation of how it how what was really important, the watershed moments. Yeah, and I think for, for Stefano and I, the watershed moment, the real turning point in, in our youth was experiencing 9-11. It was huge for us. Huge. huge. 9-11 was, was uh, traumatic for Absolutely. us. Absolutely. And, and as filmmakers, it's always our responsibility to, to be paying attention, to, to kind of read the temperature of what's going on, you know, um, politically, right. socially. And, and in the past couple of years, I mean, you know, with, with Parkland, that was a huge watershed moment for, for youth activists. The school shootings, the school exactly. shootings. So for us, we had 9-11, but for the kids now that we're interviewing, we saw that they were affected by all those school shootings in America. America has such bad gun problems yeah. and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, very different than in, in Europe. Um, and so, we saw these kids being traumatized in that way. And so we saw them make a, have a breaking point, losing their minds and, and, and starting to have uh, protesting just to be safe yeah. in school, just to imagine being safe, just to go to school to right. learn. Mm -hmm. And that was the inspiration for the day I had to grow up. Was just starting off from that one idea of understanding their lives we talked to kids for, for two years. It was a long vetting wow. process. Long time. Yeah. And then we ended up with six kids, six kids, all with different backgrounds, different races, different um, mm -hmm. ethnicities, mm -hmm. uh, but all the same age. Nobody is older than 18 and, and the youngest is 17. Yeah. So that was the beginning idea of, of the film yeah. for us. Wow. I love the title, you know, this title is just so catchy, you know, it's like, I gotta grab now. Who choose that title, <laughs> guys? This is, this is very, very good. I gotta tell you, it's a catchy title, absolutely. Where's the title coming from? Who choose it? <laughs> who, who decided? We, we, have, we have an archive of, of creative titles for all of our films. It's amazing how much we cycle through wow. before we find the perfect title. And I'm going to hand this over to Steph because he's got the knack for, for bringing that to the table. I have, listen, I've come <laughs> up with a lot of our titles for, for our, our yeah. film, but I feel a rush bag of <laughs> lots of things. I, I write uh, many titles and uh, this film had three titles before we sent it to the sales agent, uh, before mm -hmm. distribution. It had a very different, it had a different title. In, in, in the beginning mm. and it, then it had a second title during the edit. I think, I think, I think it had, the movie when you're making it in the edit speaks to you. It, mm -hmm. It's like a, it, it has a, 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 it a spiritual you. experience, yeah. a spiritual aspect to speaking to you. And I think as an artist, if you listen to film, it will want to tell you what it's about. It'll be, it'll be something like what you started with, mm -hmm. But it will also be different because it's now in real, it's a, it's a, it becomes a real thing. And that's how I got the title. I, I, I got it from the experience of growing up and that mm -hmm. when you grow up, uh, your life changes. The day you have to grow up and the day you have to grow up is the day you realize life is not the same 
when exactly. you were a kid. Exactly. And I think a lot of it too, Darwin, comes from just connecting with the piece on a very personal level. Mm. Because, you know, oftentimes with documentaries, you, you high risk of having an agenda. And even mm -hmm. that shows through in a title. Generally, you know from the title what you're going to get. Mm. And I think, you know, people are always like a bit compelled by this title because they, they don't know necessarily what they're in for, but it is very personal. And, mm. and, and that speaks to people. Uh, yeah. in all different walks of life. I love that answer. Yeah. I, I love that answer because we see so many documentaries, mm. but sometimes you already know what you're going to see and you already know the agenda. And I think that we try to have movies that we make that are about the that human, that. Th that are beyond that. They're about the human person. Yeah. Um, we try not to tell people what to think. We just want mm. to show them the actual person beyond not just what they're advocating for, but what their ups and downs are like, their, their human experience. That's the, that's, the, that's the thing we care about the most. And I think that's what I think makes us different, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, wow. Hey guys, let, let's get into the filmmaking world a little bit. How was this pre-production of The Day I Have to Grow Up? How was that process of? It was a long process, the pre-production, and it's two years, right? You mentioned it's been two years, right? The, 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 so in a documentary, the pre-production is like a very ongoing thing, right? Because you have to start preparing all the time, all the time, right? Continually before you shoot an interview and stuff like that. How's that process of in the they have to wrap with the pre-production? Walk me a little bit about that. So I, the first process, you know, we can talk about mm -hmm. first seeing Jeremy's video. Yeah. We saw the, one of the actors, Jeremy Ornstein, who we use as a through line. We saw him doing a protest in Washington, D.C. for environmental causes, for climate change, because of all the, the, the greenhouse emissions and the, the, you know, the fossil fuels and, and not being taking in, in climate change seriously enough. Mm -hmm. He gave a story that made, when I saw his protest, he was giving a big speech and talked about his life now and talked about his, what he learned from his grandparents who were in the Holocaust, who were Jewish. And I started to cry. And I watched right. so many, so many uh, political protests. I see so many things on the news. But when I am moved and I think that someone is speaking from their hearts, mm -hmm. I am curious. I want to go down that road. Yeah. I want to know what's going on. And then Laura, I called Laura up on the phone that night. I said, you got to see this. And then Laura said to me, we got to go to Washington. Yeah. And you know, yeah, tell so them about it, renting the car. That's and right. Everything. Yeah. It, it really started with Jack. You know, he was, he was like a, a big impetus for us. So we, we rented a car. We, we drove down to Washington, D.C. Right away, right away. Right away. We did a day trip. We met up with Jeremy in person just to get a feel for him as a person. You know, all the, all the kind of hoopla aside, just getting to know Jeremy personally. And it, it was amazing how much he opened up to us about just other tastes that really didn't have much to do about politics, but more about like art and culture and, you Bob know, him, Dylan. Bob Dylan, like him being <laughs> a, a kid, you know? And, and we really got a sense of him we really got a sense of the personal struggle I think he experiences in negotiating a, a persona that is authentic and, and private, you know, versus the, the public persona mm -hmm. that people did mm -hmm. see in that video. You know, we sense right. that that was a real, um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an authentic conflict that mm -hmm. I think he has. Um, which we again, try to shine it on in the doc you know, because he's our core, he's our, he's our through line for the other kids. So once we sat down with Jeremy and we knew that positively that was going to move forward, um, that's when we started to tap into other resources for other youth activists. We asked him, we, we talked about a he list. He was a valuable resource He was a us. very, yeah. you know, we sat down and we said, okay, let's, let's we sourced uh, kids from across the country. Yeah. Maybe uh, in the end, 35% came from contacts that Jeremy had worked with. The other 65 or 65, 70% were from other people that we, other kids that we had gotten with in other organizations. Yeah. But Jeremy initially was the first start who was like, okay, I'm gonna help you guys find other kids that I think are amazing. Yeah. And so he opened up the window, opened up the world 
for us to meet some, some kids that was so important in the beginning. And he said, yes, which is the most important thing. Huge. He said, yeah, I will. I'm willing to do this. I'm willing to help you. I'm willing to start the process with that. And, and I will be part of this journey with you guys for, for two years. And it, it flew by so fast, you know, flew by very, very quickly. Um, and then, then from that Darwin, you know, we shot stuff in Washington, DC, mm -hmm. uh, some protests. And then we, we, we then after a lot of that stuff, we then uh, had a shooting in, we, we, we filmed a lot in a studio in New York. We flew people into New York City in yeah. Brooklyn. Yeah. Wow. We did a lot of filming. People from DC, people from Boston, Boston, different areas. Everywhere they were coming across the country yeah. to film in Brooklyn because yeah. we live in New York. So we found a good studio that we could be in. And, and a lot of times they would bring their parents, you know, because they were mm. so young and they right. didn't know. You know, it, it, we were lucky in one sense. We had done a movie for NBC the year before. So when yeah. the kids who were very young who were coming in to do an interview, their parents were scared. Like, who, who are these people? Right. We had done on MSNBC that was like, okay, these people, these are filmmakers. They're, they're legitimate, yeah. right? They're, 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 um, they're authentic they are, yeah. and they have the sensitivity to ask really smart questions, you know? But a lot of them yeah. came with their, <laughs> yeah. a lot of them came with their parents. Really scary, the unknown. So for we us, yeah. well, for us as filmmakers, you know, when your parents are there, you're afraid sometimes how open yeah. and transparent they're going to be. Right. You know, mm -hmm. you want, you want the parents to be comfortable to have a coffee and, and, and have lunch <laughs> and be there, but you also don't want you want the kids to be left to speak openly, yeah. right? And so, mm -hmm. you know, when you yeah. deal with kids, yeah. we're used to it now. We're used to it, but we 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 have we worked with kids a lot yeah. over the years. Yeah, uh -huh. you, you don't want them, you don't want them, Darwin, to come off too postured and and too perfect. You know, you don't want their answers right. to be too meditated. So right. it, it took a few times through the interviewing process while we were filming to really get down to the the core of that individual. Mm -hmm. You know, and at right. the most vulnerable self. That's that's always the goal. Right, guys. Let me ask you something. In a documentary, you're just getting into filmmaking world again. Uh, there, you guys have a script, or well, that script starts to evolve, uh, developing little by little. How does it work? You know. And I guess yeah. uh, we're gonna talk about the post production, but tell me about that. That you have the how the question also. You use questions that you already write it down before, or you also get questions in the moment that comes to your mind. Say, I'm gonna ask this. How is that process? That's a brilliant That's a question. question. This is an amazing question, Darwin. Um, both, but you have to prepare ahead of time. We have lots of, of producers. So I'll, I'll, I'll tell you some producers that we, that we work with that we love. Okay, Julia Bolt, number one. Brandon De Los Reyes, okay? A very close friend of ours. Nolan Kelly, uh, AJ Simone, and EJ Argenio. These six people, six, seven people, plus us, so nine people would sit in my apartment mm -hmm. in a, in a, at a round table mm -hmm. and everybody would talk to us. Well, these, this is what I think we should talk about, uh, environmental causes. These are the questions we should ask about. Maybe we should ask about what their family life was like, uh, if they grew up in a political family, if their parents were conservative or, or Democrats. Um, so you, Laura and I deal with a lot of people, a lot of people have a lot of opinions. That doesn't mm -hmm. hurt us no. because we like to listen to many people's opinions in pre-production. And from those meetings at my apartment, we would write down lots of questions, maybe yeah. 30 questions, even when asked for 30 questions, you just throw out- wow. uh, Get as much paint just, on the wall. You just possible. throw as much paint wow. onto the canvas. You just try to, do a dump of, of, yeah. of everything, you know, don't be afraid if it's a bad idea. No. Don't be afraid if it's a bad question. You just nice. get it all out. That's the stuff that we do in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then we think about the structure of the documentary. Mm -hmm. And then those questions become selected go from 30 to 26 questions. Mm -hmm. By the time that you're in the interview, 
you go down to maybe 15 questions mm -hmm. and you leave five that are open for each individual person. That's right. Because things are going to change yeah. in our conversation, you and, know? And they're going to say something that inspires you to think about a new question. And it totally changes you know, for like you. Like yeah. maybe mm -hmm. asking a question about social media that's a bit more nuanced, let's say, than what you have. Like, the, you know, mm -hmm. uh, have the kids to thank for that too because they had to bring their perspective to the table that then inspired us to ask them questions that maybe we hadn't thought of before. So mm -hmm. you have to be open to that. Absolutely. Wow. There's a girl, two girls that I think about that, Sarah, Sarah. Saliani mm -hmm. and Violet Cop. Mm -hmm. Those two activists changed the, the direction yeah. of the questions because wow. of who they were as people. And we knew to listen to our instincts to say, put the book away, yeah. put the questions uh -huh. away. Let's just keep wow. talking. Let's, Let's just keep this. talking. Let's yeah. keep rolling. Yeah. Let's just talk. Wow, that's the magic, right? That's exactly, yeah. this is very interesting what you guys, I mean, you guys, before we go into post-production, how you two, how you two meet? You and Laura, how is this? We met at a workshop eight years ago. We met through a casting director, yeah. we met through nice. a casting director. Yeah. And, 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 and we always knew, we always had the same taste, Darwin. You know, that was kind of gotcha. the, the founding basis for, for our, our work. Wow. Yeah, you you guys you guys are a perfect team, you know. Simple, you know. I just I cannot see Stefan alone, and I cannot see Laura alone. You know, I just <laughs> need to see you both all the time. I'm telling you, it's it's amazing. I would, I know. I I have no desire, you know. In all the years we've been working together, we've been making films for eight years now, and a, yeah. a team. And I would say that um, I would feel very lonely. I, people ask me all the time. Feel like know? a phantom. Limb. I was <laughs> So, you know, we want to do a project, you know, yeah. would you do this project? And I say, listen, you know, I, 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 I'm so used to working with Laura now. For me, it, it's, it's, um, it doesn't, it, it feels, it's, it's not that either, you know, Laura started off directing way before me, directing mm -hmm. films, and her films were very good by herself. Mm -hmm. It's not that either one of us couldn't direct a movie by ourselves. Right. We certainly right. could, but I, I know that if we direct it together, yeah. it's, it's better. better. That's it's just better. it. You bring out the best yeah. traits and in you each have other. To make it, you know, that's what we care about, making yeah. the best. That's right. You bring so, out the best so, ideas. So you guys have like the same mindset. Can we say that? And yeah, same this is a, I, same I, I, I got to ask you something interesting now that it, <laughs> is there any, any like, I don't like this and I like this. And how do you guys solve this situation when you both are not agree on something as the uh, rock because... paper scissors <laughs> rock paper scissors shoot uh yes. uh, over yeah no uh, i think i listen i how think do we solve these the, things? the fundamental thing that you need to have in that situation is openness you, mm -hmm. you can't mm -hmm. be stubborn to a point where you don't understand fundamentally another way of doing something you need that mm -hmm. openness because then you can more easily be walked off a ledge mm -hmm. if the idea is no good and that's okay mm -hmm. because while we're in, in pre-production, especially go, sorting through ideas and trying to bake the cake, you're going to run into some bad ideas and that's okay, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but it's important that for each other, you're a barometer for that. Like you have to measure that as a partner and say, okay, but he, that, that's a good idea, but here are the flaws, here are the setbacks. Let's think about mm -hmm. this together. And if you have right. that openness and that trust in your partner, then you'll get through the situation for sure. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's the first thing that that we, I trust Laura uh, and I trust her tastes and to find to show me the, the ideas the that are the to show if I have an idea to her the aspects that are good and then the disadvantages. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. The second thing is if there's conflict between us, mm -hmm. we it's it's very rare. But if if there is conflict between us we always talk about where, what the, we open up the conversation to talk about, okay, what are you trying to achieve right. with this idea? Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe, and then we're open to the idea of both of us being wrong. Yeah. Because if you're not open in a team, to each, each person that you can personally be wrong, you can never grow as a team. Mm -hmm. And so that's, I think, part of, uh, temperament, mm -hmm. personal development, mm -hmm. um, humility, humility, 
compassion. Yeah. Uh, but you both, Darwin, it's, 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 you, I can't say this enough. You have to like the same movies. Mm -hmm. if, if Laura wants to make, right. you know, Laura loves horror films. If she's only into horror films and, and sci-fi, right. science fiction, this relationship, it can't work. No, because then you're making a different film. No, yeah, you know, like- You have two different tastes and two different visions and it's, they're gonna clash. You know, you know, you know like mm -hmm. her and I, we love Paolo Sorrentino. We love, we David love Fincher. David Fincher. We love- Godard uh, and we, Mione. We love yeah. Italian cinema. We love Fellini. We love, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. we love Bergman and, and uh, even a little bit of Tarkovsky, you know, for compositional reasons, you yeah. know, this, you, we like art house films. Yeah. Um, and we like beautiful. We like style too. Style too. Yeah. Wes Anderson with the colors of yeah. Wes Anderson. So there's right. there's so yeah. much in the filmmaking process from color to lighting mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. music to our choice of actors mm -hmm. that we really are like we we love the fact that the other person has good taste. Yeah. And that's what gets right. you through the years. That's what it yeah. is really. That's